friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and this is Rosa, my somewhat elderly bearded dragon. Rosa is here because, well, beardies are awesome, but also because she is the only lizard that I have that is native to Australia, which is relevant to today's topic. You see, Australia has an absolutely incredible diversity of reptiles. Nearly 1,000 reptile species call the land down under their home. In fact, looking back over millions of years, Australia has always been home to a staggering variety of incredible and sometimes terrifying reptiles. Across all of history, there is is one Australian lizard that stands apart from all others as truly the most terrifying reptile to stomp across the outback. And it looks nothing like this. Let's meet the Megalania. You're probably familiar with this handsome fella. This is a Komodo dragon, currently the largest lizard in the world. The Asian water monitor can get a little longer, but is actually nowhere near as bulky as the Komodo dragons, who reign supreme as the biggest, baddest, most terrifying lizard on the planet. The biggest dragons can top out at over 10 feet long and weigh almost 400 pounds, which is terrifying. These guys are apex predators dominating the ecosystem of Indonesia's Komodo Island and some of the neighboring islands as well. Komodo Island, by the way, is one of the lesser Sunda Islands, one of many South Pacific islands that Macklitz pythons, like my buddies Hobbs and Callie, are native to. Even a big eight and a half foot snake like Hobbs here, who is huffy today, would be a light snack for a hungry Komodo. They can consume up to 80% of their body weight in one sitting and often take down prey far larger than themselves. They've also been known to eat far more humans than I'm comfortable with. Adult Komodo dragons have two inch long razor sharp claws. Their scales are reinforced with little bits of bone. Aside from a bullet or a knife or spear wielded by someone way stronger than me, not much else is getting through those osteoderms, except maybe another dragon. In the wild, the only thing a Komodo dragon really needs to worry about is a bigger Komodo dragon, which is probably one of the reasons why they evolved to reproduce parthenogenically. Living on islands as they do, it is likely that they often get isolated and because of their territorial nature, males especially, encounters with other dragons don't always go so well. So if circumstances dictate that mating is not an option, we fairly recently discovered that they have a backup plan where females can just reproduce asexually. And the hits keep coming. Mammals have an advantage over most other reptiles with an extremely efficient four-chambered heart, where oxygenated and deoxygenated blood are kept separate in the left and right ventricles. Some reptiles, namely birds and crocodilians, also have this four-chambered heart. Crocodiles are much more closely related to birds than they are to other reptiles after all, so despite morphologically looking nothing alike, it's kind of makes sense that they would be also on the inside more similar to them. But most other reptiles and amphibians have a three-chambered heart, the structure of which allows some mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in a shared ventricle, making three-chambered hearts less efficient. Reptiles' metabolic and energy requirements are much lower than mammals, so it's not normally a big deal, but it does mean that they lack the endurance of creatures with the benefit of a four-chambered heart. Motor dragons, like other monitor lizards, have this same three-chambered heart. You can probably guess that there's a bug coming up here, eh? But there it is. The structure of theirs allows for pressure differences within the ventricle, keeping oxygenated and deoxygenated blood separate, allowing it to basically function like a more efficient four-chambered heart. Komodo dragons are able to run faster and farther than other lizards could at their size. Not big mammal levels of speed or endurance, but far more than other big lizards. What this means to you, if you happen across a Komodo dragon while strolling along in the jungle, is that there is a good chance you will not be able to outrun it, so keep your head on a swivel or just don't go there. One seems smarter than the other. I'm not judging, but... Let's take a peek at the business end of the dragon. I feel like I should be way more specific than that because any part of the dragon can be considered business. Teeth, tail, the claws, and I mean, with the amount that they can eat, 
the so butt. What, okay, what business end are you referring to here? I'm referring to the chomp chomp. Got it. Inside the dragon's slobbery mouth is 60 inch long razor sharp teeth driven by a bite force as powerful as a lion's. Why? It was once thought that Komodo dragons inflicted a toxic bite thanks to disgusting mix of bacteria from rotting flesh between their teeth. But a study from 2013 demonstrated that Komodo dragons spend a lot of time after a meal cleaning their mouth and the actual bacteria levels in their saliva is pretty ordinary. Don't know what that means. Komodo dragon mouths are actually quite clean. I mean, I still wouldn't kiss one. Cause you know, danger, but. Ooh, danger, danger, danger. Unbelievable. Large animals like water buffalo display horrific festering wounds from dragon bites, but actually get the infection by seeking refuge in muddy water contaminated with feces and other just gross festering stuff rather than the infection actually coming from the bite itself. But that's okay. Even though they don't have a deadly cocktail of pathogens in their mouth, tucked away between their teeth are venom glands that produce an anticoagulant and hematoxic venom, which causes prolific bleeding and a massive drop in blood pressure. While there are some biologists who have debated that these glands are actually for producing venom, it is now generally accepted that Komodo dragons, along with some other monitor species, do produce venom and are a truly venomous species. So Komodo dragons are scary, we get it, eh? But this video is about the Megalania, not Komodo dragons. So why on earth am I going on and on about Komodo dragons? Great question. Megalania was a species of monitor lizard that went extinct thousands of years ago, and Komodo dragons are the closest living things that we have to compare the Megalania to. There are other modern monitors, try saying that 10 times fast, that are more closely related to the Megalania genetically, but from a physicality standpoint, Komodos are the closest we've got. So I just want you to understand how supremely terrifying Komodo dragons are so you get the full scope of what I mean when I say that they don't even come close to the Megalania. As far as we know, Megalania is the largest terrestrial lizard that has ever lived. But, 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 before you say it, dinosaurs aren't lizards. Don't ever pop up up me again. Everything I just told you about Komodo dragons, yeah, just scale it up. Similar build, musculature, body proportions, venom, probably. Teeth, claws, just all of that, just bigger. Scientists estimate that the Megalania could have had a max length of over 23 feet. That's almost half as high as the Hollywood sign. And- Why would you use the Hollywood sign to measure that? Why not a school bus or bananas? That's popular. See, I was actually gonna do the bananas bit, but then I decided that I had been done to death, but not after I, uh, you know, looked up the number and it's 40, 40 bananas long, tall, tall. 40 bananas long. 40 bananas, yeah. Well, 39.4 to be exact, but. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do with that information. Okay, so 23 feet long and a potential max weight of over 4,000 pounds. How many bananas is that? Yeah, uh, 12,000 bananas. Is it really 12,000 bananas? Yeah. You looked that up too. Okay. But more importantly, that's more than twice as long and 10 times as heavy as the biggest modern Komodos. Remember that lion-sized bite force Komodos have? Well, scale that up. 31 times, that should be enough. That's the kind of force you would be dealing with from a Megalania. That's also five times that of a modern saltwater croc, by the way. Whatever this thing bites does only one thing. Die. Yeah, or bleed a lot. So what was the Megalania biting back in Australia's Pleistocene epoch? Well, the glib answer obviously is whatever the heck it wanted. The more detailed answer is that it likely was eating the Diprodon the largest known marsupial that ever lived. These were hippo-sized wombat-like creatures. I don't know if they poop cubes like uh, modern wombats, but if they did, I need a Minecraft joke here to just like describe the poop when they saw Megalania coming for them. If you have one down in the comments, please. You're asking them to write a joke for the video that you, okay. Cause you couldn't think of a Minecraft 
They also would have likely preyed on the marsupial lion Thylacolio carnifex, the largest carnivorous mammal to have ever lived in Australia. Although, as it is another apex predator, Thylacolio would have also likely preyed on juvenile Megalania too. So, there's that. Prehistoric kangaroos would have also likely been on the menu, as would smaller prehistoric reptiles and snakes like the Wanambi, one of my favorite prehistoric snakes. You can check out that video here where I did just all about prehistoric snakes. Humans would have also been a nutritional snack as there is an overlap from when ancient aboriginals arrived in Australia and when the Megalania went extinct. It is thought that the Megalania was the inspiration for the legendary Yui, not to be confused with the Yowie, which is an Australian equivalent to a Bigfoot. The Yui was an enormous six-legged goanna, an Australian monitor, with a frog-like head capable of swallowing a whole tribe in one gulp. Wild, huh? As big and as bad as they were in real life, and in myth, as a species, like countless others, they were no match for Homo sapiens and a changing climate. It seems that it's likely that human activity along with climate change drove the Megalania and other Australian megafauna into extinction. This is why we can't have nice things that would murder us. Megalania fossils that we have found so far date back to about 50,000 years ago, but Aboriginal cave paintings less than 10,000 years old have great detailed images of Megalania. I've also found references to some 300 year old Megalania bones that have been found, but it's always someone referring to someone who found it. I was not able to find the name of who that person was, nor any credible sources, so it's pretty safe to say that that is a lie. But despite scientists' assertion that Megalania is extinct, there are folks who occasionally report sightings of these giant menacing monitors in modern times. There are even those who claim to have found tracks, like those couldn't be faked. There are huge sections of unexplored, heavily forested areas of Australia is it possible that a creature like Megalania could be hiding there unseen? Sure, but I wouldn't bet on it. This is probably for the best though. As cool as a 20 foot lizard would be, there's enough scary things in Australia as it is, eh? So what do you think of the mighty Megalania? Pretty cool, right? Do you think that they could still be stalking their prey in the untouched forests of Australia? Let me know in the comments below. Also let me know a Minecraft joke, please. Also, also let me know if you like this kind of prehistoric reptile content and if you'd like to see more of it. Hit that like button while you're at it too, please. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to my patrons on Patreon for their support. These guys get early access to my videos, bloopers, behind the scenes stuff. They knew this topic was coming weeks ago and all sorts of other extras. Head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl and check out how you can support my channel. Thank you all so much again for watching and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. I like that place. Oh, it has a giant murder lizard. Cool, I wanna live there. I feel like the venom at this point isn't even necessary. Probably not.